Well, hello again, everybody. Welcome back to Walking Through the Scriptures with Joseph Pahoda. I want to do a quick video talking about part two of a video that I did last week talking about, you know, church coverings and pastoral coverings and how they teach it is unbiblical. I'm going to do part two today talking about, well, since it is unbiblical, then why do certain pastors, why do they want to connect with celebrity pastors? And so why do, why do a lot of these pastors, why do they want to connect with a T.D. Jakes? or a you know, Kenneth Copeland, or a Creflo Dollar, or so on and so forth. Why do these pastors want to come and, and contact and partner and what they basically say, be in covenant? That's, and, and that's a whole other video I did too in the past, how Word of Faith preachers use and they misuse the word covenant and as far as how they teach it. But why do they want to come in covenant with these mega celebrity rock star pastors? Okay, well again, it goes back to Psalm 130, 133 and it says, how good and pleasant it is for when God's people live together in unity. It is like precious oil poured on the head, running down on the beard, running down on Aaron's beard, down on the whole collar of his robe. See, and they use that, these word of faith pimps use that to say, see, just like the oil runs down in his beard and runs down in his garment and eventually runs down into his robe and runs down into his feet. See, if you come in contact, if you come in covenant, if you become a member of this church, saints, that same wealth transfer, that, that wealth anointing, that health anointing, that working in signs and wonders and miracles anointing is eventually going to run down on you. So therefore, you want the bishop to have a private jet. You want the bishop to have a, a, a million dollar, you know, a three, four, five million dollar home. You want him to have the Benz and the Bentleys and the Mercedeses and the Cadillacs and Lamborghinis and all that. And his wife to be pimping a two million dollar ring or whatever. I'm making that up, but you understand what I'm saying. You want these pastors to have that and live the life of luxury because as that wealth anointing runs down them if you're in covenant or if you're a if you're a member of this church somehow that wealth anointing is going to run on you and then you're going to operate in, in wealth as well saints again you do realize that one that's not true and it doesn't work like that and it doesn't work at all the only people getting richer are the people on top and the reason why that is saints is you can probably tell by now this is a pyramid scheme okay this is a pyramid scheme, and, and, and to point that out, so let me, so that's the reason why these pastors want to come in covenant, or they want to they want to basically fall under the umbrella of these celebrity pastors. They love saying, you know, T.D. Jakes is my spiritual father, or Creflo Dollar is my spiritual father, or you know, Kenneth Copeland is my spiritual father, or whatever. They love saying that for two reasons. Number one, because it gives them name recognition. They love dropping T.D. Jakes' name. They love dropping Creflo Dollar's name. They love the name dropping because what it does, it, it, and this is also too in a lot of these pastors' uh, churches, you'll see them with pictures of like Kenneth Copeland or T.D. Jakes. You know, they'll, they'll, they, they, they took selfies and then they'll print it out and then they'll have these framed pictures on their wall. So when people come into the pastor's office, they see all of these famous people that they hang out with on their wall or in the church. Why? Because if I can prove that I have connections to a T.D. Jakes or a Joel Osteen or a, you know, Kenneth Copeland or whoever, if I have, you know, if I can prove that I have, you know, connections with these people and if I can name drop these people, like I can say like T.D. Jakes is my spiritual father, it gives me name recognition because I know them and then what it does is it gives me clout in the Christian game. See, it gives me clout and social recognition within the Christian church. And what happens when people are like, oh, pastor, you're so anointed. Oh, pastor, you're, you know, you're right up there with the bishops of the world. Oh, pastor, you're so anointed. You're so powerful. I love your, I love your sermons. Oh, pastor, oh, pastor, oh, pastor. And the, one of the reasons that they want that or they're getting that is because of the brown nosing that they have done in networking and knowing the Joel Osteens and knowing the T.D. Jakes's and knowing the Creflo Dollars and knowing the Kenneth Copelands or whoever. Or if, you fem or if you're a female, you may know Paula White. You may know Joyce Meyer. You may know Anita Bynum or whatever. Or Beth Moore or whomever. Because it gives you name recognition. So they do this name dropping. They drop these famous names to give them clout in their social status in the church. That's number one. Number two, well, real quick on that. See, that, that's what happened with um, Pastor Jamal Bryant. Remember, one of the reasons Pastor Jamal Bryant got big is because he was invited by T.D. Jakes to preach at the Megafest. Remember when T.D. Jakes used to host the Megafests in Atlanta? 
and J Pastor Jamal Bryant. See, people, pastors were fighting. Preachers were fighting to be on that docket. They were fighting to get on that docket. Why? Because T.D. Jakes had one of the biggest ministries in all of America. T.D. Jakes at one time was on the cover of Time magazine, and they said, is this the next Billy Graham? Is this the next black Billy Graham? And T.D. Jakes was on Time magazine. T.D. Jakes was huge. And then right around this time, he, he started hosting these, these events in Atlanta. Okay, so a lot of pastors and a lot of preachers wanted to be on that docket because they knew if they got on that docket, they were going to blow up. Okay, so that's what happened with Jamal Bryant. Now, that's also happened with, uh, now she wasn't at Megafest, I don't think, but that's how Juanita Bynum blew up. Juanita Bynum blew up when she did her, one of her sermons at, at the T.D. Jakes Singles Conference. She preached the, 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 the sermon, No More Sheets. And that sermon, No More Sheets, at the T.D. Jakes Conference blew her up. The same thing with Pastor Jamal Bryant. He preached at a mega fest in Atlanta. Pastor Jamal Bryant blew up overnight. See, and the pastors aren't stupid. They know this how this game works. So that's why they're fighting like you know crabs in a barrel to try to be on that docket so they could be the next big thing. Okay? And by the way, on that, why do you think TD Jakes did his mega fest in Atlanta? TD Jakes is out of Dallas, Texas. TD Jakes is out of Texas. So if they want to get all these churches together and all these Christians together, why didn't he host, why didn't he run out the Dallas Cowboy Stadium? No, he didn't do that. He rented out the Atlanta Falcons football stadium and they hosted the mega fest in Atlanta. Why is that saints? Because most black people or a whole bunch of black people live in Atlanta. Atlanta is one of the biggest populated cities in America that has the most black people in it. Well, TD Jakes and people like that, they're very, very popular with the African American community, particularly when he did his, you know, series on, you know, woman thou art loosed and all that. Okay, so he knows who his, who his audience is. He knows who his fan base is. So don't you think that that, that was strategic? Don't you think T.D. Jakes did that on purpose? He went to Atlanta because that's, that's where the black people are, and he knows that's where his audience is. Do you think that was coincidence? Do you think that he just decided to do that? Why didn't he get with the Dallas Cowboy Stadiums? Are all those football stadiums in Dallas, that, or not only just in Dallas, but just in Texas, period? You mean to tell me he couldn't run out a football stadium in Texas? Texas football is like a state religion in Texas. He, he could have got football stadiums for days in Texas. Why Atlanta? Could it be because of all the black people there? I think so. But anyway, so they would fight to get on that docket. They would drop those names for name recognition in the game. The other thing that they reason why they wanted to do it is for Psalm 131 right here, where it says that anointing flows down. So they were taught, if I can connect with a Creflo Dollar, if I can connect with a Kenneth Copeland, if I can connect with a T.D. Jakes, guess what? That wealth anointing is going to run down on me, and eventually I'm going to be blessed and hooked up too. I'm going to be the next millionaire. I'm going to be the next famous preacher. Basically, whatever anointing that they have, I'm going to have too. So if you wanted to be on TV, if you wanted to preach at Megafest, if you wanted to you know, be the next big name in Christianity, then you needed to connect with these celebrity pastors because that was the only way you were going to be a celebrity pastor. Saints, this is just how the game was played. All right? And it may be still going on today. I don't know. But back in the late 90s, early 2000s, because again, this is how I was introduced to it. I officially came part of the, I was in the Prosperity Gospel. I was first introduced to it around like 2002, 2003. And I was in it all the way to 2011. And I'm telling you, saints, this is a lot of the stuff that was taught to me. If you want to have access to the bishop's anointing, then you need to partner with bishop and become a spiritual son or spiritual daughter. Or you financially sow into their ministry, and that's how you get access to their anointing. So if you give a whole bunch of money, then that's how you get access to whatever they got. So if they're a famous celebrity, if you want to be a famous celebrity pastor, sow into that ministry. It's really a pyramid scheme because all they're doing is just sowing upward. They're just giving upward. They're giving to the bishop or they're giving to his ministry or they're giving to that church. Saints, when I was in Korea, we, we did the same thing. We actually tithed to our higher headquarters when we were in Korea. Okay? Now, this wasn't T.D. Jakes. This was a, a different organization. But we actually tithed to our, or, our higher headquarters and gave a percentage of our church to that church to our higher headquarters. The sad thing is I was in Korea for like a year and a half and our higher headquarters basically did nothing for us until like the last couple months that I was there. They, they finally sent a bishop over to preach for us. And they finally sent a musician over there to like, you know, play some musical stuff for us. And they did like a, a, like a praise and worship night or whatever. But the whole year I was there, the higher headquarters did nothing for us. 
And I, I'm sitting here thinking, why are we giving to our higher headquarters when our higher headquarters has basically abandoned us? They've done nothing for us. And, and I don't know if they came after the tithe went, but it's like, okay, once you tithe, now we'll send the bishop or whatever. I'm like, no, if, if we are in covenant and we are your spiritual sons and daughters, then you should be blessing us no matter what. If you're a spiritual father and you really love us like you say you do, then we shouldn't be bastard children, if you will. We shouldn't be, um, you know, alienated and, and left to the wind. And I'm using that in the King James Version. Okay, so we should not be abandoned by you. Okay? We shouldn't be abandoned by you. We shouldn't be treated like stepchildren. We shouldn't be treated like you don't even care about us. We shouldn't even be treated like we're, we're nobodies. But yet that's how we were treated. And yet we're, we were... We took votes of whether or not we're supposed to tithe up to the headquarters when our headquarters was doing us like this. And, and guess what? And, and much to my chagrin, I can honestly say I voted to say yes, and we tithed up to the headquarters, even though for a whole year the headquarters did nothing for us. All right? Um, saints. Crazy, crazy stuff. That's what they did. That's what they did. Um... Crazy, crazy, crazy stuff. Um, that's, how, that's how it rolls, though. And what happens is, again, the, the people on the top, they get richer and richer and richer. The people on the bottom get poorer and poorer and poorer because unless they have a pyramid scheme under them, nobody's sewing up to them. So if you're at the bottom of the pyramid, unless you start your own pyramid, nobody's sewing up to you. So you never get any richer. The people on the bottom keep, keep being poor, i.e. it doesn't work. Okay? But that's what these churches teach. That's what these churches teach. At least they did back in the early, late 90s, early 2000s. That's what they teach. It's a pyramid scheme. Okay? And that's what they do. That's what, they, that's what these people, that's, what they, that's, what, that's how they teach church covering works. And because of that, that's why, again, the point of this, this is part two. The reason a lot of these pastors want to come in covenant with these guys is because they want to be the next big thing. Because they've been taught that's how you become the next big thing. Because that is anointing run down, that anointing is going to run on you. Guys, this is false. This is heresy. This is false teaching. This is not biblical. But that's what they teach. And real quick, too, on that tithing thing and spiritual fathering thing. A lot of bishops and a lot of pastors, if you want to come and covenant with them or contact with them, they would require, if you want to be my spiritual son or if you want to be my spiritual daughter, you have to tithe to me or you have to tithe to our ministry. I need a certain percentage of your church to come to our church and then I'll come and partner with you. Well, you don't have a father's heart. You know, I, I am not your spiritual son. I am your tenant. I am your tenant. I'm not a son. I'm a tenant. But that's what a lot of these pastors, that's what a lot of these bishops did. They're like, yeah, I'll take you on as a spiritual son and I'll take you on as a spiritual son church. But I need, I need to cut. I need to cut from your ministry. Saints, this was a game. This was a game that they played. Okay? Um, and, and they used tithes and offerings and all that to do it. They, they, these are games, gimmicks. These are scams. These are pyramid schemes. And, and they're being ran in the church. Okay? But again, the reason a lot of pastors wanted to do it was for name neck recognition so I could, they could drop names so they could have social status and clout in the church, and so they could be the next big thing. So that anointing could run down to them, even though that's not true, but that's how that, that's what they would do. So guess what? A lot of bishops took advantage of that. They're like, okay, well, then if that's the case, if I can get about 10 churches under me and those 10 churches tithe to me, or if they tithe to our ministry, we're going to be rolling in the dough. And oh, by the way, I, don't, I really don't have to do anything for them. I, I don't ever have to come to their church and preach. I don't ever have to bless them with materials. I don't ever really have to do anything. I can basically ab abandon them, like, we, like I said, like we did in Korea, and I don't got to do nothing. All I got to do is provide my name. I don't got to pray for them. I don't got to bless them. I don't got to lay hands on them. I don't got to minister to them. I don't have to do life together with them. I don't have to send them materials. I don't have to do anything with them at all. Just give them my name, and you tithe to me, and... We're good. So I can basically abandon you like a stepchild, like I don't even know you. Again, like it says in the King James, like a bastard child. That's how we treat people. Okay? 
and it's all good in the hood because I'm getting some money from you. Well, again, that doesn't make me a son. That makes me a tenant. Doesn't make me a son. It makes me a tenant. I'm paying rent to be a part of your organization. I'm not a son. I'm a tenant. I'm paying rent. But this is why they do it. So this is church covering part two. All right. Church covering part two. Um, if this has blessed you, please hit the like button, hit the share button. Please get this message out to as many people as you can. Please hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so already. And uh, until next time, know that Jesus loves you, 92. God bless.